So good day. Uh, my topic for today is about uh, file management. Uh, computer are designed to store and manage information. In order to do that successfully, they must provide a logical storage methodology and an interface that allows a user to seek and work with the stored data. All computer storage devices are arranged into a logical, hierarchical structure that makes it possible to store and retrieve data. It does not matter if you are working with a hard disk inside your PC, a flash drive connected to USB port on your laptop, an SD card inserted into a card reader slot, or a storage location on a server somewhere in cyberspace. All storage location can be traced through a logical hierarchical path. So, this will be the objective of this uh, topic. In this lesson, you will be able to use Windows File Explorer to find, move, open, and manage files. You will work with Windows, learn about default locations, learn about file types and file permissions. Upon the completion of this lesson, you should be able to navigate a directory and follow paths, understand rights and permission, use File Explorer, and work with Windows. Recognize different types of files, work with files and folders, and find files. Work with the recycle bin, and describe default the location. Share pictures on a small phone, manage electronic media, and share files with other users, and zip and unzip files. Now, on a personal computer, each storage device or location is referred to by a drive letter. For example, drive A, drive B, drive C. But commonly used, of course, a C. This applies to internal storage devices, map, network folders, and externally connected storage devices as well. The hard drive in a PC is drive C. This is where the operating system and application program are installed. We need to take note that in the early days of personal computing, the letters A and B were reserved for desk drive that accommodated removable storage media called floppy disk. Hard drives did not become available until some time later. And when they did, the letter C became the standard drive letter for hard disk drive. When you write a designation for a drive letter, you follow the letter with a colon. For example, you should write a C colon or to refer to drive C. The hard drive in PC is drive C as I mentioned, and this word operating system and application program are installed. If your PC has two do drives and a DVD drive, the primary hard uh, drive is drive C. The secondary hard drive is drive D, and the DVD drive is the drive E. The price of drive mapping of a simple, uh, simply a, mat a matter of tracing the path to a particular network location and telling the operating system that you want to refer to this location using a particular drive letter. So if you have access to shared network location, you can create shortcuts to this location by mapping a particular location and assigning it in a drive letter. When you connect an external storage device to your PC, so for example through USB port or an SD card slot, the operating system automatically assigns the next available drive letter to that device. The following figure, okay, as what we have here, shows the PC with one hard drive to map network devices and two connected flash drives, D and F, and an inserted SD card, F or E. Because uh, external storage devices are constantly connected and then disconnected, drive designations for these devices are assigned each time a device is connected. A particular flash drive may be drive E on Monday and drive G on Wednesday, depending on whether other external devices are connected on Wednesday before the flash drive is connected. 
folders and subfolders. You can store files in the root folder of a drive. However, it is more efficient to store files in folders. A folder is a container for files and provides a method or organizing information. It's sometimes like a hanging folder in a file cabinet within which you can organize other folders and files. A subfolder is simply a folder contained within another folder and the terms folder and subfolder are often used interchangeably. A folder you can create is represented by a yellow icon that looks like a file folder but sometimes it is blue depending on your application. So you, you can create using Windows or an application program. Additionally, Windows provide a feature called libraries to help you access file quickly. A library is a collection of items such as files and folders assembled from previous or various location and presented in one central location. A library looks and acts like a folder and they are often referred to as folders. For example, the document library is often called the document folder and the libraries in Windows 10 are camera rule, documents, music, pictures, save pictures, and videos. Directories and paths. The organization of files in folders on a disk is called a directory or directory tree. The highest level of any directory on a disk is the root folder or a root directory. The root directory is always presented by the drive letter in a colon, followed by a backslash. For example, the root directory of the hard drive is presented as C colon backslash. Every file on a computer is stored in a particular location on a disk, and that location is described by its path. A path indicates the exact route to follow to get the location of a file. When you write a path, you separate each folder level with a backslash. So consider the directory structure shown at, the, at this presentation. The structure shows that documents library with two folders, one called 7.5. Student files. We have another called annual reports. The annual reports folders contains two subfolders and one called 2015 and one called 2016. Stored within the 2016 folders are four files named balance sheet, budget 2016, computer sales, and meeting minutes for 2016. If you were to verbally describe how to find the balance sheet file, you could say go to documents, then annual reports, then the balance sheet documents is inside the 2016 folder. If you write, uh, uh, if you were to write your description of how to find the file in path notation, it would appear as follows, document, backslash, annual reports, backslash, 2016, backslash, balance sheet. Connecting smart devices. When you connect a smart device to a PC, the device appears as a location or a folder. A smart device is one that includes its own operating system. Smartphones, tablets, and e-readers are examples of a smart devices. You can connect a smart device to your PC using a USB cable and usually for the purpose of copying or moving files from the device to your computer. So, uh, once the device is connected, you can navigate its internal storage system just as you can a folder within your PC. Uh, as what we have here in our figure, okay, uh, it shows part of the internal storage system of an Android tablet. So, identified as QMV7B and connected to a PC. Uh, the file and folder permissions. File permissions are rules that determine whether you can access a file and you can do with it. Let's begin our discussion by defining or defining two basic files permission. Number one is read. Okay. Of course, uh, 
you can view the names of the files and folders on the network, view the contents of the files, and execute application program files. Another one is write. You can view the names and contents of files and folders and can create new files and folders modify the content of files and you can delete also the files and folders. As a standard user, you can create, edit, view, or print files for your own user account. You cannot, however, work with the files and folders created by another user on the, on the system. In fact, you will not be able to access folders stored under another user's profile. So if you try to navigate to another user's folder, the operating system denies your access. Only a user with an administrator account can work with files stored another or under another user's file. And additionally, the operating system may restrict you from saving or altering files in certain location. So for example, if you want to paste a file into the root directory of the hard drive, administrator level privileges are required. How about a network access? If you work on a network, for example, at your school or within your organization, there may be areas of the network that you cannot access. The network administrator controls which user can access a specific network resources, uh, such as, of course, printers or servers or file stored in the network folders. One of the primary job rules of a network administrator is to protect an organization's assets, and this is generally accomplished by providing the least amount of access privileges required for users to perform their daily task. So for example, a user in data entry who spends all day entering customer orders in the company database does not require access to the company web server, except perhaps to request web pages on the company intranet. The web server administrator, on the other hand, requires access to the web server but does not require access to confidential documents handled by the human resource department. By restricting access to the resources or folders that contain sensitive information, network administrator keep the organization's data secure. If you need to access files stored in a specific network location, the network administrator will set a specific permission to for those files and that control what you can do with them. For example, you might have access to a document in a network folder, but even though you can read the, the document, you might not have permission to make changes to it. Additionally, you may be able to view the contents of some network folders, but not to be able to create or save files to those folders. There might also be some folders that you cannot access at all, but if you need to work in a specific file or folders uh, stored in a network location, but do not currently have sufficient permission, you should contact the network administrator so that he or she can adjust your rights accordingly. So, again, the shortcut definition of a network administrator, it controls which user can access specific network sources, such as printers, servers, files, and stored in network. And a web server administrator maintains web server services that allow for internal or external access to website. And the loca local location is a drive or folder on a storage location within the computer or immediately attached to the computer. And the remote location is one that you access over a network, either wired or wireless computers. Understanding local and remote location In terms of computing, a local location is a drive or folder on a storage location with a computer or immediate attached to the computer. So for example, a folder on a con connected flash drive or an SD drive. 
As I mentioned earlier, a, a remote location is one that you access over a network. Computers you connect to over the internet, storage location in the cloud, and shared network folders on your organization's LAN or on another computer in your private LAN or Windows Home Group are all example of remote location. Now, using File Explorer, the graphical representation of location directories in files that you have seen so far in this lesson are part of the interface of File Explorer. File Explorer is the file manage or management interface of Microsoft Windows. It provides a GUI or graphical user interface for accessing and working with files. Like any other task you perform on your PC, every interaction you have with File Explorer takes place inside one or more windows. You use different types of windows depending on what you are doing, but all windows share similar features. To open a file explorer, click the file explorer icon in the taskbar or click start then click file explorer or you just simply double click a folder on the desktop or press windows plus E for you to activate the file explorer. So this will be an example, of course. No, so we have a, a menu, no, a menu control in the left side. We have an access con quick access toolbar. We have address bar, refresh, expand, minimize. We have help. We have a split bar at the left side, and of course at the bottom we have a status bar. We have also at the right the left side navigation uh, no pane, and at the right side of the lower part is the view buttons this will be the functions of different parts of a user file explorer or a, or a file explorer a, a while ago i will show you the control access of course located at the or the control menu located at the top no click to display option to restore move, size, minimize, maximize, or close the window. How about the quick access toolbar? It contains buttons for frequently used commands. By default, it displays the properties new folder and customize quick access toolbar buttons. However, you can add the undo, redo, delete, and rename commands to the toolbar. And you can also specify to show the toolbar below the ribbon. Another, of course, is the title bar. In File Explorer, the title bar displays the name of the currently selected folder. In an application window, the title bar displays the name of the application in the name of the active file. We have a control buttons, right? Change the way currently open windows are displayed as uh, no, follows. So we have minimize, temporarily close the window, replacing it as a button on the taskbar and click the button on the taskbar to open or restore the window. We have also maximize. Uh, display the windows full screen. Okay, then restore down. Restore the window to the size it was before it was maximized. And the close window. So, to close the window, of course. The file menu... Uh, it display option of for working in the current folder. So, for example, you can open another window that shows the contents of the current folder. Or, you can open a command prompt window or a PowerShell tools window. You can also open a dialog box that allows you to configure option for the current folder. We have also a expand or minimize the ribbon. Click expand the ribbon to expand the ribbon and keep it expanded even after uh, you click a command. When the ribbon is, is expanded, this button changes to minimize the ribbon, which you can click to minimize the ribbon at any time. Uh, we have also a uh, ribbon tabs.
File Explorer window include ribbons for uh, work with, uh, working with files. When you click on a tab, the ribbon expands to display the, uh, the available commands. When you click a command on the ribbon, the ribbon minimizes again. The File Explorer ribbons are, of course, we have the Home tab. Includes commands for copying, moving, and, re, uh, and renaming files. We have also the share tab. Includes commands for emailing, printing, sharing, or compressing files. The view tabs includes commands for changing the display of the contents in the current. Actually, some ribbons are contextual and when appropriate display on a manage tab. Uh, for example, if you are working in a folder, that contains image file, the manage tab appears in display a picture tools ribbon, which include commands for rotating images, setting an image as a background, or displaying images in a slideshow. We have also an expand uh, or minimize the ribbon, as I mentioned earlier. Help. Click Help to open the browser to a page of help topics related to using Windows 10 File Explorer. Navigation buttons. Use a back, of course, or forward to navigate back and forth among previous views or files and folders. Click recent location to display a list or location recently visited in File uh, Explorer. Click a location in the list to jump to it and click to move up one level in the path. The address bar. It indicates the current location and facilitates quick and easy navigation. These features allows you to click the name of any folder visible in the path so that you can go to that folder or click the arrow that appears next to any item and see other items at the same level in the folder hierarchy. The address bar is also known as the breadcrumb bar. Previous location. Click, of course, the previous location at the right end of the path to open a drop list of previously visited locations. Click a location in the list to jump to it. And of course, we have refresh. Uh, click refresh to refresh the display in the contents pane. Search box. Use this box to search for a file for folder within the current folder. And of course, it's subfolders. Navigation pane. Display drives in folders in a tree view. Click a drive on folder in the navigation pane to view its content in the con content panes. The contents of the navigation pane are commonly called the folder lists. Contents pane. It displays the content of the drive or folder currently selected in the navigation pane. Double click a file or folder in the contents pane to open it. A split bar. The split bar separates the navigation pane from the contents pane. Click and drag the split bar to show more or less of the navigation pane. A status bar. The status bar display properties or details about the item or items and currently selected in the content page. We have also view buttons. Affects the display in the contents pane. Click, of course, this sample, ano, uh, this sample uh, to view details about each file or folders. Or click the other uh, icon to view thumbnails, each folder or each file.
moving a window. You can move a window anywhere on the desktop using the mouse or, key, uh, or keyboard. Position the mouse, of course. Pointer anywhere on the title bar and then drag the window to a new location. When the keyboard, with the keyboard, you just simply press Alt plus space bar to open the control menu. Press the down arrow key to select the move command and press enter to put the window into move mode. Using the arrow direction keys, move the window to the new location and then press enter again to exit mode or to exit move mode. Maximize windows cannot be moved because they occupy the entire screen. So you can only move a restored window. So oh, that is not maximized. Okay, the scroll bar con cons consists of three parts, an arrow button, at, at each end of the scroll bar, a scroll box, and a scroll area. The scroll box is also called a thumb or an elevator. Sizing a window, on occasion you, you may want to change the size of a window so you that uh, you can see more or less of the information inside it or so that you can view that information in a multiple windows and you can use the mouse or the keyboard to size a window. You just uh, simply position the mouse pointer anywhere of the border to be sized and uh, you see the mouse cursor change to a vertical double-headed arrow and for the top of the bottom border or the horizontal double-headed arrow or the left or right border. Drag the mouse to the desired size. To size the vertical and horizontal side up at the same time, position the mouse cursor or any corner of the window. And then drag to the desired size for the window when you see diagonal double-headed arrow. Some windows are set to a specific size and cannot be altered. With the keyboard, press Alt plus space bar to activate the control menu. Press the down arrow key to select the size command and press enter. Using the appropriate arrow direction key for the side you want to resize or to size, press the direction key until the window is the size you want and then press enter to exit resize mode. You will need to repeat this action for every side to be sized. As I discussed earlier, if a window is too small to display all its content, a scroll bar will automatically appear vertical on the right side of the window and or horizontal at the bottom. Because as I mentioned, uh, in using, uh, for you to use one of the following methods to move around with the scroll bars, you need to uh, click in the lighter shaded area above or below the scroll box to display the previous or subsequent screen information. Click the arrow either end of the scroll bar once to display a line of information in that direction. Click the arrow at either end of the horizontal scroll bar once to display a column of information in that direction. Click and hold down the mouse button on the arrow at either end of the scroll bar to have the screen scroll in that direction. Drag the scroll box to a specific area in the scroll area to move directly on that location. Depending on the program, you may also see uh, some tip showing where the cursor will be placed when you release the mouse button. Working with files in folders. A file is created using a specific program. The type of program determines what type of file it is. So we have what we call application program or application file rather. This type, this type of file includes very detailed instructions for the microprocessor on what tasks to perform. Such as, of course, read, write, and calculate. And it is usually stored in a folder name for that program which in turn resides in the program files folder on your hard drive. 
We have also a data file. This type of file contains information you have entered and saved in one of the applications you have on your computer. So, for example, you might have created a budget file in Excel, a letter file in Word, a database in Access, and so on. And this file can be stored anywhere. The next will be the system file. This type of file contains detailed instruction for the microprocessor on what task to perform, except that they are part of the operating system. Many of these files are hidden to protect them from being changed or deleted. So regardless of the file type, all files appear with the icon that include a symbol of the associated program. As what we have here, no? Uh, an example of icons that appear beside an application file is the Excel, a data file, Excel workbook, and the system files windows. Uh, files or folders can be saved in display anywhere, windows including on desktop for a quick access. An icon is, of course, we have an icon later. Actually, uh, an icon to one of these uh, indicates that a data file or folder is a save in this location. So, if a file is, uh, is a data file, the miniature icon in the, uh, represent the program needed to view or modify the pro documents. Uh, the text below the icon is the file or folder name. If you delete a file or folder icon, you will delete the actual file or folder. Creating folders. You can create folders at any level, including directly on a Windows desktop. And for you to create a folder, use one of the following methods. In the File Explorer window, click, of course, the folder in the Quick Access toolbar. Or, right-click the location for the new folder in the Folders list, click New, and then click Folder. Or right-click a blank area of the content pane, click New, and then click Folder. Windows create the new folder in which for you to give it a name. Type a name for the folder and press Enter. Navigate to the location of the new folder before executing the new folder command. The address bar displays the path of current location of A as a reminder. Windows does not restrict where you create folders or whether another folder shares the same name is in another location. It is recommended, however, that you keep folder names unique to prevent accidental deletion or replacement of files in folders. You can rename or move any file or folder to another location as appropriate. Working with files and folder options. You can change the appearance of the folder to suit your preferences by changing its properties. You can also change the way you view folders and files in display file types or extension. In changing folder options, to change the properties for a folder, select the folder then click the file menu in then option to open the folder option dialog box as shown at the right side. Na? Take note that sometimes this menu item display as change folder and search option, and at other times it display as options. Uh, the folder option dialog box include three tabs. We have the general tabs, as shown as what we have here in our in the right side, the figure ano, the, the figure in the right side. As you can see here, we have open file explorer two. It allows you to specify a default location to display within File Explorer when you first launch it. You can choose Quick Access or this PC. And actually, this will be the default. The Open File Explorer 2 is to open each folder in the Arrange window. The next one will be Browse Folders. 
it specifies whether each folder will open in the same window or in a different window so you can switch between the windows. The next will be the click items as follows. It provides option or whether to a single uh, to to use a single or double click to open items. So uh, you could able to set if you want to have a double click for uh, a set folder to open or you just simply one click to open the set folder. And the, the most important thing is the privacy. Allows you to, say, to specify whether you want to show recently used files and folders in the quick access section. So if you want to open in a quick section, so you just set it into a privacy. Changing the view. There are different ways to display information for files and folders. Occasionally, you may want to sort files in a specific order or see more information or files in folders. Select the view option. Use one of the following methods. So as what we have here, click an option in the layout section of the view. Okay, uh, view ribbon or just right click in the blank area of the content page content pane and then click view for file management we have an available views are of course extra large icon it shows files and folders as very large icon which can be helpful for visually impaired users file and folders names display below the icon okay at the right side the large icons, it display files in folder as large icons with file or folder names below the icon. And this is helpful when you want to preview the contents of the picture files and have not turned on the preview pane. We have the medium icons. It display files in folders as medium sized icons with the name below the icons and it's help helpful when you want an overview of folders or files in a certain location. Small icons. It lists files and folders as smaller icons with the names display to the right. Contents are sorted alphabetically in multiple columns from left to right. We have list. Display the contents of a folder as a list of names is preceded by small icons. Contents are sorted alphabetically from top to bottom in multiple columns, starting with the leftmost column. And this view is useful if your folder contains many files and you want to scan the list of a file name. Details. List the contents of the open folder and provide detailed information about the files and folders inside it, including name, type, size, and date modified. Tiles, uh, display files in folders as medium-sized icons with the file names to the right of the icon. The file format and file size also displayed. And of course, the contents. It display any properties of reference information about the contents of the file. You can click the sort by button in the view tab to arrange files by name, date, modified, type size, date created, authors, categories, tags, or title. And you can specify ascending or descending order. Uh, for you to, uh, of course, additionally, when you can see the column heading in the content pane, you can use them to sort up contents or to manipulate the view order. To adjust the width of the column, Position the mouse pointer over the vertical line at the right edge of the column and you want to adjust the mouse pointer display to a plus sign. Click and drag to the left or right to make the column narrower or wider. And to sort the content uh, by item type, click the type column heading. Choose the app, pacing arrow symbols indicates the items are sorted in ascending 
order or A to Z or 0 to 9 or a, a down pacing arrow symbols indicates the items are stored in descending order from Z to A or 9 to 0. Understanding file types and file name extension. A file name extension is a suffix added to the base name of the computer file and separated from the base name by a dot. Operating systems and application program use file name extension to recognize the format of a file and to identify which program created the file and which program may be used to open the file successfully. Most, most operating system automatically recognize common file name extensions and associate particular application programs with particular extension. This association make it possible for you to double click a file to open it. The operating system launch the necessary application and then opens the file within the application. Additionally, Windows display an application icon to the left of the file name, indicating which application is associated with the file type. In general, the icon is a visual reminder of the software program used to create or access the file. If Windows uh, display a generic file icon, then it does not know which application to use to open the file. In most cases, this is because you do not have an application installed that is capable of opening and editing the specific type of file. And take note, there are thousands of file types and applications. So, I have here, uh, I just want to share the or introduce a few of the most common types and the application often associated with them. Of course, in audio files, maybe so we, we are very much uh, always uh, using the audio or a video. Audio files uh, are generally produced using a specialized application, but can be played through freely available application called players. Common audio players include Windows Media Player, Windows 10 Group Music App, WinAmp 2, WinAmp 3, and iTunes. When you double-click an audio file, the associated player opens and begins playback of the file. The common audio types, uh, of course, is, is the AIFF, Audio Interchange File Format, developed by Apple Computer, but most browsers can play AIFF files. We have also MP3 or M4, M4A. A motion picture expert group or MPEG requires a player application such as iTunes, Apple QuickTime, or Windows Media Player. .wav, waveform audio file format. This is a na native sound format for Windows, and most browsers include built-in support for WAV files. This is also the form used on audio CDs or compact disc. .wma, that is Windows Media Audio. Developed by Microsoft, and this format produces much smaller files than the web, that .wav format. So, it is advisable for us to use that .wav that rather than uh, that .wma that rather than that .wav because of the smaller files. No, producer much smaller files. That is for audio. Now for video. Video files are generally produced using a specialized application, but can be played through freely available application called players. Common video players include uh, Windows Media Player, the Windows 10 Movies and TV app, and an Apple QuickTime. When you double-click a video file, the associated player opens and begins playback of the file, and this will be the common use video files format. That ave. Audio file or audio video interleave. Ang ibig sabihin po ng AVI. Or AVI stands for audio video interleave. Standard video files for Windows. ABI or that AVI files place in Internet Explorer through the Windows Media Player. Apple QuickTime Player can also open this format. That move or that QT. Standard video formats for Apple QuickTime Movies and the native format for Macintosh operating systems. Opens with Apple QuickTime Player. .mpg or .mpeg and .mp4. 
that is a motion picture expert group, standard format for video files on the internet. Opens with MP4A, play MP4 players, Windows Media Player, and Apple QuickTime Player. That SWF. That is an animation file created with Adobe Flash and played in a web browsers through the Flash Player plugin. The WMV, Windows Media Video, Media Video, a compressed video file format originally designed for internet streaming application. We need to take note that not all media types are compatible with all players. For example, if you download a movie clip and then, then receive an error message when you try to play it back, it may be due to the fact that the player does not support that particular video format. You can look online to find which player is required and then download and install it. Next will be the graphics files or graphics files. When you say graphics files, that is an images or uh, graphics files are images. Many graphics formats are supported in web browsers and most operating systems include built-in graphics viewers. Graphics can be imported to a system from a digital camera or a scanner or can be created on a computer using dedicated graphics creation and manipulation program such as Microsoft Paint, PaintShop Pro, or Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator. When you double-click a graphics file, the image display in either a dedicated graphics editing program or in a viewer. If the, if the file is not supported, Windows prompts you to select an application to use to open the file. And common graphics formats are number one and the most commonly used is that GIF or the graphics interchange format. A graphics format used for line drawings and illustration. We have also JPG or JPEG or the JPEG format. The joint photographic experts group or the graphic format used for photographs and complex graphics. We have that PNG or portable network graphics, a graphic format commonly used on web pages. We have that TIF. Or that TIF, TIFF. Tag email, tag image file format. A graphic format is commonly used for desktop publishing and medical imaging. Document files. A document files can be created using specialized applications such as those found in the Microsoft Office suite in OpenOffice or in web apps such as those you can access on Google Drive or OneDrive. Some formats can be opened and edited in simple text editor such as Notepad and some formats such as PDF and RTF are designed to be cross-platform compatible and that is you can open them on Windows system or Apple systems or in a Unix system. Uh, Double-clicking a document file is open it in an application that can support it. Document files. But of course, it must be installed on the system. The document file format sample, of course, is that .esc or ASCII, a standard text format for all computers, regardless of an operating system. That .doc, the default document format for Microsoft Word prior to version 2007 or Windows WordPad. That .docx, the default for document format for Microsoft Word 2017, 2007 and above. That .htm or that .html, hypertext markup language, the document format used in web pages is supported by all web browsers. That one, of course, the default format for Microsoft OneNote. That PDF, is the PDF stands for Portable Document Format. Document format supported on all operating systems through the use of the Adobe Reader plugin. A full version of Adobe Acrobat is required to edit a PDF file. Microsoft Office files and document created in Google Drive can be saved to PDF format to make them cross-platform compatible. 
that PPT or that PPTX, the default presentation for Microsoft PowerPoint. That RTF, the default presentation format, uh, rich text format, a document format that supports text and images. This format is supported by most word processing application across many operating systems. That text or that or that txt or that text document format that supports plain text only without formatting. Double clicking a that text file on a Windows system will open the file in either Notepad or WordPad. That XLS or that XLSX, the default spreadsheet formats to Microsoft Excel. Executable files. Executable files are names that launch a program or procedure. Take great care when opening executable files that you receive via email or that you download from a website with which you are not familiar. When you open an executable file, your PC can automatically run any number of operations without your explicit approval. An executable file formats are as follows. So we have that bat, bat's file found on all DOS system or DOS systems, disk operating system systems. That CGI, common gateway interface, script file used to generate web content. That CMD, Windows command file. That com, disk operating system command file. That DLL, dynamic link library. And these files are not executable but are libraries of code that are referred or called by executable programs. That .exe, Windows executable program that these files are typically self-extracting compressed files. That .msi, Windows installer file, these executable are used to automate software installation on Windows system. That .vbs, uh, that, that is a Visual Basic gra uh, script files created in the Visual Basic programming language and that .vbs script have been used to spread viruses. We have also uh, an archives or uh, compressed file formats. Archives are compressed file formats. Used primarily on the internet, the compressed file format reduces the amount of time necessary to download the file. Archives can contain any type of file, images, documents, executable, and so on. A compression utility is required to compress and decompress the files. Archive file formats include that vc or that bz2 archives files used by the bz bunzip application that tar a compressed file used on a unix win system and we have that zip okay the most commonly used compressed file used the pk zip and win zip application Viewing the file extension. To keep things simple and keep the display uncluttered, you may want to hide the file name extension in File Explorer. Displaying file name extension can be useful, however, for example, you can display extension to show with picture files use the JPEG, GIF, or TIF format. Viewing the file extension is also useful for differentiating between two files with the same name but different file formats such as .xlx versus .csv. Both of these files types can be opened in a spreadsheet program such as Microsoft Excel. However, a .csv file is not a native Excel file type and will not appear in a list of available files when you try to open a file from within Excel. By viewing the file name extension or audio or video files, you can quickly identify which program can you use to open the file. Another good reason for displaying the file types is to help you easily identify executable files and these files are used to launch a program. You should take care before launching an executable file. While in most cases these files launch legitimate programs, they can also be used to install a virus on your computer. 
To display the file extension at all times, open a file explorer window, click the file menu, then click change folder and search option to open the folder options dialog box. Click the view tab and in the advanced setting list, uncheck hide extension for no known file types. When you need to see hidden files, you can uncheck the hide protected operating system files option. Important files must, uh, such as system files or the data file for an, an email provide are hidden to prevent them from being deleted or changed in, inadvertently. Protected system files may be displayed when a technical support person is working on your computer and needs to view them. It is recommended that you hide the system files once he or she has finished. In selecting files in folders, before performing any action such as copying, moving, or deleting, you must select the file or folders. Considering the following traditional methods of selecting files or folders, this method works in all versions of Windows. To select one file or folder, click it. To select all files and folders with a location, click the Home tab and click Select All in the ribbon or press Ctrl A. To select multiple uh, files or folders are consecutive, are, consecutive, are consecutive, point the first file or folder in the list, press and hold the shift key, and then point to the last file or folder in the list. To select files using the lasso method, point at the right of the first file or folder to be selected, then click and drag up or drop down to select the rest of the files or folders in the selection. A box will appear as confirmation of the selection along with the files or folders being highlighted. To select multiple files or folders that are non-consecutive, point to the first file or folder to be selected, then uh, press and hold the control key and then point at each file or folder to be selected. At any time as files or folders are selected, if you need to change any part of the selection, use either the shift or control key to deselect a specific parts of the selection. To deselect or turn off the selection of the files or folders, click anywhere away from the selection and take note, Windows 10 items in File Explorer display a checkbox when you point at them in display a check in the checkbox when they are selected. Before the Windows search box, how to copying and moving files in folders. The files in folders may be copied or moved from one drive location to another, from one folder to another, or to the desktop. Use the folders list to view the hierarchical structure of the folders in subfolders and to quickly navigate between the different folders or drives. In copying files or folders, when you copy a file or folder, the original remains in the source location and a copy is placed in the destination location. To copy a file or folder, first select it and then use one of the following methods. Click the Home tab, then click Copy in the ribbon, navigate to the new location, click the Home tab again if necessary, and then click Paste in the ribbon. Or press Ctrl plus C, move to the new location, and then press Ctrl plus B. Or right-click the selection and then click Copy, navigate to the new location, right-click and then click Paste. If you are copying files from one drive to another, Windows will automatically copy the selection as you drag the selection to the new location. If you are copying files in the same pr drive, press Ctrl as you drag the selected file or folder to the new location. As Windows copies our files from the source location to the destination location, it will check to see if there are files with the same name already in the same location. If so, you will see a message similar to what we have. Searching for files. The Windows Server search, uh, of course, you can use two methods actually of finding files. In folders on your system, you can use the Windows search box or the Cortana feature or you can search from within the file explorer. 
The window search box is located in the window taskbar just to the right at the start button. When you use the window search box, window display results from your system in the internet. You can use the search box to find help, apps, files, images, settings, and so on. Click in the box and begin typing a search term. Windows will display suggestions and answers to your questions in a panel that appears above the search box. Notice that the result is the previous figure are grouped by installed apps. Store apps, setting, documents, and web. Windows will group the results is gathered depending on what is found. Uh, simply click on a result to access it. You can also press the window key and begin typing to use the Windows search box. Actually, in the Mac, you can use the built-in spotlight feature by clicking the spotlight icon or by pressing command plus spacebar. Uh, if you want to use, of course, for example, uh, searching within the file explorer, I forgot. When you search from within the file explorer, you limit the scope of the search to the current folder and any subfolder below. In the direct directory hierarchy, Windows will not search folders outside the given path, nor will it search the internet. Click in the search box within a file explorer window and begin typing a search term. As you type documents that match that search term display in the window. Looking at the recycle bin. The recycle bin is a temporary storage area for files and folders that you delete from the local hard disk. Files and folders deleted from external disk or from a network drive are permanently deleted and cannot be restored from the recycle bin. The recycle bin has an icon on a desktop for easy access, but it is also accessible from File Explorer. Uh, we have two icons here uh, used to represent a recycle bin. The number one is indicates there are files in the recycle bin that can be stored or the recycle bin can be uh, emptied. In the, the other one is in, indicates the recycle bin is empty. If the computer is shared by multiple users, a separate recycle bin exists for each user account on the computer. To permanently delete a file and bypass the recycle bin, press and hold the Shift key while deleting the file. If you want to permanently delete the file, just simply Hold, press and hold the shift key while deleting the file. In deleting, I will give you the uh, procedure on how to delete the files. In deleting files in folders, when you, no, when you no longer need to files or folders, you can delete them. Always check the contents of the folder before you delete the entire folder. And this is especially crucial if the folder is stored on a network drive or external disk, as these are not cannot move to the recycle bin. To delete a file or folder, select the file or folder and then use one of the following methods. Click the Home tab and then click Delete. Or select the file or folder and then press Delete. Or right-click the, right -click the folder and click Delete. Or drag the item to the recycle bin icon on the desktop. And how to restore? Of course, you can restore a deleted file or folder to its original location. Double-click the recycle bin on the desktop to open it. You can restore only an entire file folder, not individual items that were deleted in a folder. To restore a file to folder from the recycle bin, use one of the following methods. Select one or more files or folders to be restored, click the Manage tab, and then click Restore the selected items. If you want to restore all items, click the Manage tab and then click Restore All Items or right-click the selected files or folders and then click Restore. Emptying the Recycle Bin Deleting uh, Deleted files remain in the recycle bin until you empty it or it becomes full. In the latter case, Windows will automatically delete all their files and folders to free up a space for new items. When a file or folder is deleted from the recycle beam, it is permanently deleted. To empty the recycle beam, use the following methods. Double-click the recycle bin on the desktop to open it. Click the Manage tab and then click Empty Recycle Bin. Or right-click in the black area of the recycle bin window and click Empty Recycle Bin. Or right-click the recycle bin icon on the desktop and then click Empty Recycle Bin. 
Website items. Any file that you copy from the internet and save to your computer is saved in the download folder. Regardless of whatever it is, an image file is a document, a user manual, or an executable file. In certain situations, you will be prompted to save a file you want to download and you can specify where you want to save the file. However, if you save a file or image from the internet and are the unable to find it, check the downloads folder. The pictures. Windows use the pictures folder and subfolder for saving your picture files. Certain actions save image files in a specific default location. So for example, when you use the Windows 10 camera app to take pictures on your laptop, those pictures are saved automatically in pictures slash uh, camera roll folder. If you take screenshots using the Windows plus print screen command, these are saved in the pictures screenshots folder. If you create uh, shots using a Windows snipping tool, these are saved in a pictures folder. Additionally, if you use the Windows 10 Photos app to import pictures from a digital camera to your PC, these are imported by default into the pictures folders as well. Keep in mind that these are default location. In many situations, you can specify a different location in which to save your pictures. However, if you take some actions that results in the saving of a picture file and you don't pay attention to where it is saved, you can check this default location first. Picture in your smartphones. Uh, we love to take pictures or even show a cute video using our smartphone. And once we grab the fantastic shot, we, can, we want to share it with our friends and family. Usually, we want to share it right then and there. Fortunately, smartphone apps make it easy to point, uh, click, and share. Photos that you take with your smartphones are stored in a picture gallery. When you access the picture gallery, you can click any pictures to view it full screen. Tap the picture to make the picture options visible. The following figures uh, earlier ano, or icons share the photo tap and share icon to bring it a menu of apps you can use to share the picture. Actually, there are a wide variety of apps you can use to share pictures. Apps that appear as sharing option depend on the apps you have installed to your device and on the types of accounts you have. For example, social media accounts, email uh, accounts, and so on. When you use an app to share a photo, the app handles the transfer and will prompt you to enter the necessary information. So, For example, if you want to send a photo via email, you will be prompted to enter the name or address of your recipient. You can type a brief message and then click send to send your picture on its way. Notice all that uh, you can send the file to a variety of cloud location. Simply tap the appropriate app icons and then confirm what you want to proceed. Using hardware to share photos. Uh, you can also share photos with other uh, users using hardware methods for transfer. Uh, save your photos to the SD card, remove the card, and give it to another user. Connect to PC using a USB cable, navigate the phone's directory structure, and then copy that desired connect. To PC using a USB cable, navigate the phone's directory structure, and then copy the desired photos. Most um, smartphones store uh, photos in the DCIM camera folder. Uh, of course, using Bluetooth, sharing it, both devices support it. Put both devices into discovery mode. Then, when your phone detects the device to, to which you want to send your picture, tap the device in the list of detected devices and tap the send command. Your recipient will need to accept the file transfer. Now, managing electronic media. Electronic media or digi digital media refers to media that is stored in played or viewed electronically, like music, books, movies are widely available in electronic format and you play these formats within a player app designed for the content. That is, you play movies on your Windows 10 laptop in a movie player app such as 5K player or movie and TV player for Windows 10. On a Mac naman or iPad, you might use iMovie. You play music on that same laptop in the music app such as Groove Music. 
You read e-books on the e-reader such as Kindle, Nook, Kobo, or Sony Reader. Or on a device on which an appropriate app has been installed. These players in player apps are designed to handle digital content that is freely available and redistribute as well as content that is protected by digital right management or DRM software. A DRM is designed to prevent the unauthorized use or redistribution of the media to which it is applied. DRM restricts the way you can copy content that you have purchased. For this reason, you cannot directly manage digital media using File Explorer or other computer file management utilities. In many cases, you cannot even see the digital content using File Explorer. You need to access and manage your titles using the player or player app. Consider the following pair of figures as what we have here. The background images show it eight, eight ebooks that are downloadable to the PC in reducing the Kindle app. The foreground image shows the storage location for the books that have been downloaded to the PC. The recognizable titles are for, e for free ebooks in stored in a uh, movie format. The, uh, the, the other are for books which were purchased for the Kindle and they are saved in a format which support DRM. Sharing files. The available methods for sharing files have evolved over the years. Shortly, we will examine sharing files in the cloud. In this section, we will review a few old school methods for sharing files which are still used today. Of course, we had uh, a removable media. Perhaps the oldest method of sharing files with other users is to copy them to removable media and uh, such as of course USB flash drive and then deliver the media to someone else who can then plug in the drive and copy the re requisite file from the drive on their own system or either disket before okay or kaya CD room or CD or or CD the public folders although standard users cannot see files created by other users on the given PC you can place files that you want to share into one of several public folders located in your drive C. All users on the computer systems have access to the public folders. If you want to make uh, some of your files available to other user account on the computer, save or copy them into the public folders. If you want to share a folder, a file or a folder only with a specific user, of course, you can do by setting the sharing properties for the file of, or for the folder. In, uh, actually, in File Explorer, right-click the file or folder you want to share, click Properties to open the Properties dialog box, then select the Sharing tab. Click the Share button to access a screen where you can enter the names of users with whom you want to share. Uh, type, of course, the username and click Add to add the user to the list of people who have access to the shared file. If applicable, click the permission level arrow to adjust the per permission you want to extend to the other user. The default permission level is read, but you can change it to the read and write if you want the user to have the ability to edit your files or add or delete the contents of your shared folder. Click the share button to enable the new setting, then click done. And uh, before I forget, the user with whom you shared your file or folder will, will be able to navigate to and access your shared file or folder using File Explorer the next time he or she logs onto the system. If you want to share a file or folder with another user on the same network, but of course not a different user account on the same system, you can copy the share link that display in the box and paste it into the, an email message and send it to the person with whom you want to share your file or folder. As long as that user is on on the same network as you, he or she can simply click the link and access your file or folder. Conversely, you can stop sharing a file or folder within a specific user by removing that user's name from the share properties or by turning off sharing. We need to take note, of course, uh, that you must be logged on with an administrator account to enable sharing. 
If you try to enable sharing with, while log on with a standard user account, you will be prompted to enter an administrator user name and password to enable sharing. Again, you can share the folder if you log on to an administrator account. Network shares. An another way to share files or folders is to place them in a network share. A network share, or also called a network drive or network folder, is simply a location on a server that is available over a network. Network share are used within the private confines of a local area networking. Network administrators often set up shares so that students or employees can access files and are stored in a central location. As you learned uh, a while ago, at the network administrator controls who can access what and what they can do with it once they can access it. <coughs> the email at attachment. Uh, it is easy and convenient to share files with others user by sending those files as attachment to an email message. Uh, all email programs, uh, of course, were located, installed, or web-based, web enable you to attach and send files with the messages. As you are composing a new message, you can click an attachment button or icon and a dialog box will open which you can use to navigate to and select one or more files you want to attach to your email message. The specific name of the dialog box varies from one email client to the next, but all of them function in the same way. When you attach a file to an image uh, to the, an email uh, a message in Gmail or Yahoo, for example, you use the choose file to upload dialog box. In Outlook.com, you use the open dialog box, and in the Outlook desktop app, you use the insert file dialog box. When you receive a file as an email attachment, you can save the attachment to your computer and then access it using a file explorer. How about the limitation on email attachment? While well, sending all the files you want to share as email attachment might seem like an easy solution, there are certain uh, limitations to using email for sharing files. Uh, the maximum attachment size in Gmail, take note, is only 25 MB. Outlook, the limit is 20 MB. And in Yahoo, the limit is 25 MB also. Even if your particular email service allows very uh, large attachment, your intended recipient's email service may not. If you need to send many files, it might be best to send them in a series of email messages to avoid hitting the file size limit. Uh, you might also want to consider shipping the files into a compressed format. In uh, most cases, you cannot get around the file type restriction by shipping the files into a compressed format. However, you may be able to send your file as an atta attachment if you manually change the file name extension. And your recipient will need to change it back to the correct extension after saving the file to his or her system. Compressing files. When you need to reduce the size of one or more files, you can use a file compression utility. Compressing one or more files is also referred to as zipping. Uh, much like when you stop a tote bag of as full as possible and then press everything down to make it fit prior to sipping or closing the bag. Some files are larger than others simply by the nature of the type of file. For example, video files are usually very large and should be converted to a compressed format such as that .ave so they can be shared. Music files in that .wav format are generally converted to that .mp3 format to make them smaller for sharing. Picture files with an .tif or .bmp file type tend to be large in size and are compressed to a .png or .jpg format. The image, audio, and video files you are encountered on the internet are already in the compressed format, which reduces the time required to download them to the contemporary storage folders on your hard drive utilized by your web browsers. You are probably already familiar with the popular uh, zip, no? programs that compress text and messages or images. WinZip and PKZip are third-party utilities that have been used to easily and successfully compress and unpress files 
for decades and built in SIP utility has been included with Windows since Windows XP. SIP files are also called archives. Computer running Windows, Mac OS X, Linux, and Unix can handle SIP archives files. And of course, to compress a SIP file or folder, locate the file or folder that you want to compress. Right-click the file or folder, point, then point to send to, and then click compress zip folder. To, un to extract unzip or to, uh, to extract or unzip compressed files and folders, locate the compressed folder from which you want to extract files or folders. And to extract a single file or folder, double click the compressed folder to open it. Then drag the file or folder from the compressed folder to a new location. Or to extract the entire contents of the compressed folder, right click the folder, click the extract all, specify a destination folder of the extracted files. Then click Extract. So, I think you have learned from my discussion. And this will be my references actually. So CCI Learning Solutions 2016, uh, Avanti M, of course, Basic Office Application and Anvil Publishing Incorporated, Avanti M, uh, ICT Empowerment, MS Office Application, Unlimited Books Incorporated. Thank you very much. This will be my email, my FB account, and my YT account. So thank you and God bless everyone.